We have caught Clayton Morris lying on camera, and I can prove it. Let's dive in. Hey, real estate investors, welcome to another episode of the Landlords from Hell show here on Holton Wise TV. I am your host, James Wise, and I am sure a lot of you have already seen this video. If you have not, what I need you to do is check out the full length film that we have made about the Clayton Morris, Morris Invest, Ocean Point, all of those scam allegations. Now, that is a very, very long film. It's actually over three hours. Um, but I'm going to continue this video because this video is an update on things that have happened since that film was produced. So this video is only going to make sense to you if you've already watched that. So if you haven't already watched that yet, what you want to do, you want to go ahead and pause this video, click in the show notes below and take a look at that video. Again, it's, it's incredibly long, so you're going to need uh, to devote some serious time to it because this story is just so deep. There's so many layers. There's so many onion. It's like an onion. There's so many people that were affected by this. Uh, there was no feasible way for my team to tell that story in a video that was any shorter than what it was. So my apologies for how long it is, but to get the entire uh, idea of what's going on, it, you know, you need to watch that full film. So assuming you are someone who has already watched that full film, I want to provide a nice little update uh, for you guys because some um, things have happened. Number one, one of the biggest things, one of the biggest developments that have happened since that film was released was Burt Whalen, that's Clayton Morris's business partner uh, in, in the whole thing down in Indianapolis. They were working together to sell properties to investors. He has actually been federally indicted. So he is facing several criminal charges. In addition, Burt Whalen's indictment also references company one and an individual one and the individual one while not directly named it is mentioned that individual one is a resident of new jersey now surprising to nobody guess who was a resident of new jersey before they fled the united states of america and went to portugal you guessed right if you guessed clayton morris now what is particularly funny to me, though, about Clayton Morris being a New Jersey resident prior to moving to Portugal is in that incredibly large and uh, gigantic lawsuit that Clayton Morris has filed against me. Clayton Morris claims that he is actually a resident of Pennsylvania who is merely traveling abroad, even though his wife has posted publicly online things about schools and putting their children in school districts over there in Portugal. The whole thing is just complete nonsense. As a matter of fact, this is how much uh, weight I put into the Clayton Morris lawsuit against me. I've actually been using this uh, so I can actually display my little piggy bank and my LeBron James bobblehead. I needed to get it a little higher so you can actually see it. So I've actually been using Clayton's lawsuit against me uh, to actually display these two items so you can see them better. So that is what I feel about Clayton's lawsuit, which is nothing more than a simple slap lawsuit. He's trying to bully Holton Wise into putting this information out there. As a matter of fact, when he went ahead and actually demanded, you know, he made his formal demands. That's what I have for you right here. He made his formal demands. The guy is suing me for almost $7.2 million. He is suing me for $7,176,000. And more importantly, if you go to page three 
of his demand claim. This is something I really want to draw your attention to. Plaintiff additionally seeks an agreement that defendants will remove all copies of the trailer video and the full-length video from YouTube and all other social media platforms, destroy all audio clips of plaintiff, and refrain from using Mr. Morris's name, likeness, voice, copyright, or trademark in any context in the future. Plaintiff also demands that defendants issue a statement of correction. So in a nutshell, what my legal team and what we uh, are picking up from this is Clayton is looking for us to destroy all audio we have. That sounds an awful lot like things that could be used as evidence against him in a possible criminal proceeding. Perhaps company one and individual one named in Burt Whalen's federal indictment. I don't know. Why would he want... Things that we have him saying, why would he want those to be destroyed? Well, it's interesting because we have actually caught Clayton red-handed lying. Now, back to the original documentary. I want you guys to take a look at this. Stuff on, on bigger pockets and those, those ass clowns. No, I mean, the liberal press has had their, had their that's why the conservative press hasn't touched it because they know it's a bullshit story. Um, like you're, you're literally in Portugal, though. Like you, you see how that looks. You're you're actually in Portugal. So I mean, I I, I think claiming it's bullshit when you're you've literally left America. I, that doesn't really make sense, does it? I don't know how this is any of your business. Uh, so I really don't know how you made my business your business. Where I live with my family, where I choose to live, living in. I, how is this any of your business? You also don't know the statistics, which I'll share with you now, that only 7%, 7% in our Indianapolis market were harmed. And it is a situation. I don't, uh, I don't agree with that math based on my sources. Well, because, here, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you right now. I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you what I got. I'll show you my hand. right now. We talked, you saw, uh, you told me. At the highest level, that, that number is, is accurate, and those numbers have been through with a fine tooth called by authorities in a much higher position than you. You told me so, that you sold 500 properties down there, correct? Correct? You sold 500 properties down there? Yeah? No? We did. Last time I talked to you, you said you sold 500 properties down there. Oh. Okay, you when I you received uh, you received a commission of six. Now I just want to make sure you caught that. Okay, Clayton Morris claimed that he did not sell a single property down there in Indianapolis. We're gonna play that again for you. Pay attention. He is saying that he did not sell a single property down there in Indianapolis. Right? You sold five hundred properties down there. Yeah? No? We did. Last time I talked to you, you said you sold 500 properties. Oh. We didn't sell a property. Okay. Now, that is is rather interesting because in, in the same video, right, that documentary video, again, it's a super long video, so I don't know if you guys caught it or not. During the interview with Sandy Pirtle, she had this to say. Now, throughout this entire process, Clayton Morris has maintained that he was merely a middleman and he was merely connecting investors like you with property managers in these markets. And the big market where you had the majority of your loss was Indianapolis, and the main person that he was connecting investors with was Burt Whalen and his company Ocean Point. And I any- never heard of Burt Whalen until the uh, emails started going back and forth among the owners. Never heard of him. Clayton Morris, if you listen to his podcast, makes it sound like Ocean Point is his. Okay. So when you were actually going through the process to buy these properties, you thought you were buying them from Clayton Morris? Yes, and the first property they sold me, I actually bought directly from Clayton Morris. As in Clayton Morris had signed your purchase agreement? Yes. 
And basically, I questioned them when the next one was signed by someone called Natalie Basin. So, what we have in that video is Clayton telling me that he never sold a single property, but yet Sandra Pirtle, who estimates that she lost close to, or she lost, she's estimating that she lost $359,000 investing with him. She's saying that she never heard of Burt Whalen and she provided a purchase agreement that was actually signed by Clayton Morris himself. In addition, if you heard her say, she made it seem like Clayton made it seem, she says that Clayton made it seem like he was an owner of Ocean Point, which is consistent with this document that I have right here. You see, ever since we have uh, told the world, so to speak, told the investing world that we were making this film and been working on this film and let people know that Clayton decided to sue us for almost $7.2 million, People have been flooding our company with evidence, including evidence such as this document, which is an email. A person emailed Clayton Morris and they said, just wondering, are you the owner of Ocean Point Holdings as well? Or is that a separate company that you just work with to manage the properties that you sell to investors like me? And an email address uh, replied on June 29th, 2007, uh, that email address was Clayton at MorrisInvest.com. Yes, sir. We have many LLCs that we use to hold our acquisitions before rehab. And that is just one of them that we own. That's uh, rather interesting. What else I find interesting is this email that I received from the legal team that Clayton Morris has hired to sue me. Now, in this email, <clears throat> they let my legal team know, I write to express concern about what appears to be intentional misrepresentations to the court and improper publication of Mr. Morris's settlement demand. So, Clayton Morris, the guy who sent this email that says he owns Ocean Point, the guy that signed the purchase agreement that Sandra Pirtle provided to us, the guy that told me on camera, you saw it on the screen, told me that he never sold a single property down there in Indianapolis. Well, we've been provided a signed purchase agreement from Sandra Pirtle. In addition, that is not all. I would not have made a video update for you guys if I didn't have even more. As I said, We've had many people out there who've been affected by the situation sending us documentation because they are, of course, upset for what happened to their investments, but they are also incredibly pissed about this $7.2 million lawsuit. And what I have in my hand right here, well, this is another purchase agreement. This was signed March 13th, 2007, and this is for a property uh, 2516 South Pennsylvania Street, Indianapolis, Indiana. And if you scroll down to the last page here on line number 317, that's what's nice about a lot of these real estate purchase agreements. They have a, uh, they, they number the purchase agreements, so it's easy to find things. If you look on line 317, well, will you look at that? Who signed this purchase agreement? It looks like Clayton Morris signed this purchase agreement. But wait! Wait, folks, there is a little bit more. And that's why this lawsuit, this gigantic lawsuit that Clayton has filed against me, that's why I utilize this lawsuit as nothing more than something to stack my little piggy bank and my LeBron James bobblehead on. Because what I have right here is another purchase agreement. This one from 5-1-2017. This is for 3528 Kinnear Avenue, Indianapolis, Indiana. And you know what? We're going to scroll to the last page here. And if we go right down there to line number 317, would you look at that? What do we have? A signature from our boy, Old Clay himself, Clayton Morris, signing another purchase agreement that seems to be 
a direct contradiction from what he said. Let me play that for you one more time just so it sticks in your head. Right? You sold 500 properties down there? Yeah? No? We did. Last time I talked to you, you said you sold 500 properties down there. Okay. Wow, that's rather interesting. In summary, I could summarize this up, but you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to take another clip out of that documentary we film we made about this situation because I think my guy Jay Hendricks said it best. Problems with his, his defense, and, and it'll go, you know, in a deposition, it would just go, were you lying then or are you lying now? I mean, there's, there's no way out of that. Well, that's all I've got for you guys today. Just a quick update on where we are at with our legal battle with Clayton Morris. If you are someone who thinks that they've been harmed by Clayton Morris or Burt Whalen in any way and you would like to give some of your information to us so we can either help you get your story out there or if you think some of the evidence that you have can possibly be used against either of these two gentlemen in a criminal or civil lawsuit or our $7.2 million lawsuit, please let us know. Drop a comment below. In addition, if you could please help get the word out, go ahead and share this story on your Twitter, Facebook, email. Make sure you are adding or sending this to any and all reporters, watchdogs, or other real estate podcasts that you are aware of. This is a large story that we need to get out there. Until next time, I'm James Wise with Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. RentTech Direct provides you with an easy-to-use yet robust platform for managing your properties, complete with its built-in reporting and accounting system that can be customized to fit your business. You can manage work orders and even accept them online from your tenants. You can also share work order details with tenants or owners if you wish. With RentTech Direct, you will also fill your vacancies faster than ever with the built-in marketing tools. Just enter the details of your property and RentTech will automatically provide you with a professional online website as well as syndicate them to popular websites such as Zillow, Trulia, and Apartments.com to get your listing maximum exposure so it's rented fast. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from health. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.